my fourth year of Bachelor of Health Sciences at McMaster. Um, and as I mentioned, I'm also a Diabetes Hope Foundation Scholarship recipient uh, from 2019. So I do live with type 1 diabetes. Um, and I'm also the co-president at McMaster Diabetes Association. So I really love interacting with diabetes from like an organizational point of view, just meeting other people and interacting. And I'm really, really happy to be here today. Um, you might recognize me from last year. I was also a co-host then. So hopefully you're not tired of my voice. Um, but we do have many new things planned for this conference today. So we'll get into it soon. I know I'm not tired of your voice, but hi everyone. My name is Asma. I'm actually a fourth year student at the University of Toronto Scarborough. I'm just doing a bachelor's degree in life sciences, I'm mainly majoring in population health and double minoring in psychology and biology. Um, I'm also one of the co-presidents of the Diabetes Awareness Society at University of Toronto Scarborough. And honestly, I'm just really happy to be here. It's actually one of my first um, events with Diabetes Hope Foundation and many universities across Ontario. So it's definitely something new. I'm really excited to be here and honestly just to learn more with all of you today because at the end of the day, I feel like there's always something to learn. So yeah, thank you. Um, hello everyone, my name is Mohammed. Uh, I'm a fourth year student at the University of Ottawa uh, and I'm majoring in health sciences. Uh, and I am part of uh, Team Diabetes at U Ottawa. And at Team Diabetes, I hold uh, the VP finance position. And hi, my name is Heather. I'm the program coordinator with the Diabetes Hope Foundation. Um, many years ago, I went to Trent University and also uh, University of Toronto, where I got my master's in social work. So welcome. So today's conference, uh, the theme is mental health and diabetes. So how mental health impacts diabetes and how diabetes might impact mental health. Um, so to start off, we'll have a land acknowledgement. Um, we'll have DHF and the university uh, clubs here to introduce themselves, uh, get to hear about their mission and what kinds of uh, events they're running. Uh, we have a special panel discussion with three of the DHF alumni who are here today, and they live with type 1 diabetes as well. So looking forward to hearing about their perspective on mental health and diabetes. Um, we also have planned these mental health boosting breakouts. Uh, so these are workshops, uh, there's three of them, and they're kind of centered around specific topics within mental health, and that'll be more of a time to really discuss and engage with some of the individuals. I know someone mentioned that's what they're looking forward to today, so we'll have that opportunity, um, and we'll wrap it up with a community mindfulness activity. So I will be starting off with a land acknowledgement. Um, we do believe that it's something we do need to recognize, especially with our event. Um, and just, you know, in general as well, especially after everything that's been going on. Um, so we recognize that Toronto is in the dish with one spoon territory. The dish with one spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. Now we do recognize that many of you, you know, are from um, different universities, different areas, different lands. So you can also visit that website, which is nativeland.ca, and you can learn more about the territory you live, learn, and work on, and honestly just reflect on it. So we're looking at what your connection to diabetes is, and right now we're seeing a lot of people have type 1 or they have family or friends. Oh, a nice split there, 33-33. Interested in learning about it. And if there's anything you feel that isn't represented, feel free to type that in the chat as well. So what do you think of when you hear the word diabetes? Think of the first thing you thought of and just, just type that word in and let's see what our class says. Sugar, okay. That Maybe actually reminds, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, that actually reminds me of a conversation we had previously, like mm -hmm. while actually planning the event, where like it's actually such a common thing, especially just in general, in, like um, Asian families and cultures and households. Like the first thing that usually comes to mind is sugar. I'm sure you may have had a different context with this, but the way I have always seen it is like, you know, sugar, diabetes, the same link, same thing. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out there. I think there's a lot of like stigma and misconceptions related to that, which maybe our panelists will get into. Um, but we're also seeing a lot of like insulin, which is good community pressure, lifestyle, carbs. A yeah. full time job. Oh my goodness. <laughs> For sure. A1C, nice. 
Awesome. Well, thank you for participating. We'll definitely uh, get into this with our panelists as well. And kind of the, like I said, the misconceptions and the stigmas associated. And before we really get started, um, we did want to touch on the three different types of diabetes. I, I think there's more, but these are the three main ones, uh, just for anyone who's attending who might not know the differences. Um, so we do have type one, which is the autoimmune disease where the body no longer produces insulin. Um, so that does require daily insulin administration. So that might be through uh, pump or injection pens. Uh, and that's not a cure, that's more of a way of managing it um, and it can't be prevented. Um, and it's often called juvenile diabetes, but I think we're kind of uh, changing directions from that term because it's not only diagnosed mainly in childhood, but also adulthood now. Um, with type two diabetes, it's more of a progressive disease where the body stops using the insulin that's produced. Um, or at least uses it less. And this onset can be delayed through diet and exercise. Um, the keyword is can, not like it will be delayed. Uh, so that's not necessarily the case for all type 2 diabetics, um, but it can be managed through diet, exercise, or medication. And kind of similar to type 1, where it's the opposite, where it's typically diagnosed in adulthood, um, but it can be diagnosed in childhood as well. And the third type you may have heard of is gestational diabetes, which is Kind of like temporary uh, type 1 during pregnancy so the body's not able to produce enough insulin uh, to support the growth of the baby um, and it can be controlled again through diet exercise and insulin may be necessary um, so the reason we want to bring this up is because we're going to be talking about mental health and some of our breakout rooms uh, talk about diet and exercise and uh, by no means do we mean that this is kind of a cure or a way to kind of resolve all the problems that diabetics go through. I think like everyone faces their own challenges and you've probably heard, right? Like eat, eating healthy, exercising is good for you. Um, and that's just another way that diabetics can use these tools to, I guess, take care of their mental health and take care of themselves. So with that, uh, we will get into our introductions. So we're just going to start with the Diabetes Hope Foundation, DHF, uh, which is a grassroots not-for-profit organization that was founded by Barbara Pasternak in 1999 after two of her sons were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And Barbara's here. Barbara, did you want to say just a quick hello? Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's so amazing to see so many faces. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the host and thank you for Heather for putting it together. Um, it's we're going to be celebrating our 25th anniversary in 2023. So this is has been a result of the amazing community that we have created in the last 25 years. And for all our alumni who has stuck with us and created a strong community um, for those who follow. I really appreciate it. I'm watching you. I'm so proud of all of you. And thank you, thank you for supporting DHF and supporting each other. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Just a little bit more about uh, DHF. So the foundation's mission is to provide education and resources to help youth who are living with diabetes transition to a healthier tomorrow. Um, and we do this through supporting them as they navigate the transition to the adult healthcare system and as well as post-secondary school. We have a lot of different programs that we have to support this work. So we have our Hope Connects peer mentorship program, which is open to any first or second year student living with diabetes who's looking for a peer mentor to connect to. We also have our scholarship program, um, which is open to youth who are graduating high school and you can apply online now so if you know someone who may qualify you can apply right now on our website we also have a wellness webinar series on youtube which has i don't even know how many lots of different webinars talking about mental health and diabetes how to take care of your diabetes um, just sort of giving you a sense of what it's like to live with diabetes and some of the supports that are available to help you with that and we also have a series of free transition resources um, which are also available on our website so free for download we have two pdfs one is the transition in the kitchen cookbook um, which is a bunch of different recipes that are quick and easy i don't think any of them have any more than five or six ingredients in them so just in case you're not looking for McDonald's, you want to make something at home that's really healthy. Um, and they've got all sorts of different balances. You can use them for different diets. So if you're celiac or vegetarian, there's lots of options in there. And we also have our guide for successful transition, which looks at the all the universities and colleges across Canada and gives you all the tools you need in order to transition. So it talks about insurance options and the accessibility offices and mental health resources. And we've just launched our free transition app 
which is for, uh, you can get it through our website. You don't need to download it, so it doesn't take up any room on your phone. And it has all the amazing information that we have in our transition guide, as well as tips from our alumni about sort of how to plan for a night out or exams, um, things like that. So you can get all of those at our website, diabeteshopefoundation.com. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Sandra. I'm the president of U Ottawa Team Diabetes, and I'm just going to be introducing our club. So our mission is to spread awareness of diabetes and promote healthy active living. The favorite experience of most of our team members is just fostering a community of like-minded individuals, like many of you mentioned. So meeting other university students who are passionate about advocating for diabetes education and are either diabetic themselves or know loved ones who are diabetic. And so some of our upcoming events include a diabetes seminar where we'll be inviting professionals to talk about diabetes. We'll also be hosting an informative and fun trivia night with prizes and then also the Smash Volleyball Tournament, which is our 14th annual one this year. And some of the mental health resources available at U Ottawa are the live chat, which is available from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And you can chat with peers, mentors, or mental health specialists who are trained in uh, supporting the wealth the wellness, sorry, wellness and mental health of students. Um, also, online counseling appointments can be booked through the UOTWA website, and you can get an appointment with the UOTWA mental health counselor. And then also, the Student Academic Success Service at UOTWA offers therapy assistance online, which is a self-help platform of tools and educational modules to help you manage stress and go about your everyday life. So you can find out more information at uottawaca slash wellness. Hi everyone, my name is Sanjana and I'm one of the directors of events for the Diabetes Awareness Society at the University of Toronto Scarborough. So our team's mission is to raise awareness about the preventative measures of diabetes and encourage students to live a healthy lifestyle. One of our favorite experiences from the past year at the DAS is uh, how, reflecting on the experiences of our guest speakers. So last year, our club hosted an event with a clinical pharmacist and a researcher from the UFT Nutritional Sciences Department, where we learned all about diabetes and how it affects individuals on the daily. And we learned about uh, how the clinical pharmacist and researcher went about their work and research. So lastly, our university does provide some mental health resources. This includes the Health and Wellness Center, the My Student uh, Support Program, and the Navy Student Mental Health Virtual Assistant. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Jazz, and I'm joined by Ishita, and we are the VP Externals for McMaster Diabetes Association. As part of our McMaster Diabetes Association, our mission is to advocate for a diabetes community and raise awareness of diabetes within the McMaster community. Some of our favorite experiences include our annual research seminars, as well as our Hall Halloween social events. Recently, MDA hosted our first General Assembly in combination with the Halloween event consisting of some fun games. Um, to, create a more, to create more opportunities to continue with our mission, MDA is planning on hosting some upcoming events such as Are You Smarter Than a First Year, community cooking initiatives, as well as a Valentine's Day fundraiser. As we note, uh, today's conference is all for mental health and diabetes. And being a representative at McMaster, some mental health resources that we wish to provide for the students are firstly our diabetes mentorship program in partnership with the Diabetes Hope Foundation, which essentially aims to provide a mentor for students transitioning into McMaster. As well, our MDA T1D ambassador program provides a support group for students to ask questions, help each other out, and essentially share their experiences with T1D. And lastly, our Student Wellness Center and Accessibility Services provide students with diabetes accommodations for testing, those that need extra time, as well as additional resources and counselors for guidance. And these, all, these initiatives essentially aim to improve the mental well-being of students by providing them with resources and support groups, as well as an opportunity to share their experiences and connect with others. Hi, everyone. So I will be speaking on behalf of York University. Um, their club name is Diabetes on Campus. So the mission is to support students with type 1 diabetes through peer support, education, and awareness about the community. Their favorite experience is meeting other diabetes on campus. Um, some upcoming events include a winter meet and greet where um, students across the university can come together and just spread awareness while also share their stories if comfortable. Um, some mental health resources at York University actually includes um, some counseling. So they have a booking system, they have a keep me safe, as well as a good to talk and a virtual health clinic 
all three different services that York University provides for students at the university, um, which can also be found on the link on the screen or their Instagram as well. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Vidanshi. I am the president of Western Diabetes Association. Um, our objective is to really provide a medium for those interested or directly exposed to type 1 or type 2 diabetes. At, on campus, um, the Western Diabetes Association will work alongside the Canadian Diabetes Association, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and other organizations in order to promote research, raise awareness, as well as provide education to its members and the entire student body. Um, one of our favorite experiences um, would probably be the annual research conference in which um, we have like professors who do research related to diabetes and we also have um, other organizations organizations and nutritionists come in and talk about um, the field of diabetes. Um, our upcoming events is our trivia night, which we do in collaboration with Kidney Club, and we just play games related to education and case studies. Um, and our nutrition talk night, which when we have like a dietitian come in and kind of discuss ways where you can handle being a university student and live with diabetes. And we also have our um, club socials throughout the year. Um, some mental health resources at Western are is the Health and Wellness Service Center, the Peer Support Center, and um, you can always book an appointment to see a psychologist. Yeah. All right, thank you so much to those representatives uh, for speaking on behalf of your clubs. I wanted to ask uh, everyone here, what did we think about these five different university, we heard missions, events, mental health resources, any thoughts or kind of reflections on what we just heard? And feel free to speak up, uh, raise your hand or use the chat. I'd like to say something. Um, hi guys, my name is Kyle. I'm with the McMaster MDMA, uh, MDA, sorry, uh, McMaster Diabetes Association. Um, I didn't know there was this much going on at other schools in terms of uh, diabetes advocacy and outreach and help. And it really means a lot to know that so many people are behind this cause. So a pleasant surprise on my part and thank you for everyone. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Kyle. You're right. Like there's like so many universities that seem like we're kilometers apart, but yet yeah, we're so similar too, right? Like all of those mission statements seemed very similar um, about raising awareness. And I'm looking at the chat, um, as we are saying, it's interesting to see how different activities are planned and we can definitely take inspo, right? Like I was noticing some of the other university uh, events saying like, oh, like we could do something like that. Or if you ever wanted to collaborate as well after this event, you can reach out to each other and um, plan something together. Um, a message from Chanel saying to keep up the great work, everyone, yes. And yeah, seeing that it's so nice to see all these initiatives for diabetes awareness, for sure. And I think that was kind of the reason why we started this conference, because um, I feel like we're all in our like university bubble and we all just do things within our university, but realizing that there's so much more going on outside as well. And I know we have that Ontario bias, but hopefully one day we'll get to see across Canada as well. I know we have someone from UBC, I think. Um, so that's fantastic. And yeah, thanks so much for everyone for sharing.